No. What? God, no. Why? Jesus. No. You like that on three, one, two, three. You, like it! you are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, your pal, and the kid you copied off in math class. My name is Luke Braun. You can find me on Twitter at Luke Braun NFL. Show is on Twitter at Locked On Vikings. Show is available wherever you find your favorite podcasts, including Amazon Fire or Roku. Just download the Locked On Minnesota Sports app. And today's episode is brought to you by prize picks it's daily fantasy made easy pick two to five of your favorite players and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection you can win up to 10 times your money on entry first time users get a 100 percent instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with promo code locked on that's prizepicks.com promo code locked on uh today on the show i baited you i did it i got gotcha. you i pulled a sneaky on you um I'm, I'm just i'm sort of kidding i will talk to you about Trey Lance, and just because it came up on uh, Score North, I think is where I saw it. I have no idea what their conversation was. I didn't uh, I actually listen to that show. I just saw their title and thought, I'll answer that question too. Um, no, <laughs> I'll tell you why I think that. But really, it's an excuse to get into the what do we do about Kirk Cousins conversation. I said earlier in the offseason, this is going to be a whole episode. Uh, it's like a conversation that's worth a whole episode. This is that episode. So I'll talk to you about what the options are with Kirk Cousins, what an extension would look like, what doing nothing would look like. Um, and I even have like a fairly detailed extension that I would throw forward as a pitch. And let me try to sell you on that. I think even if you aren't a big Kirk Cousins fan, I can sell you on that. And if you are a big Kirk Cousins fan, then I probably don't have to. Um, but at first, uh, promises made, promises kept. All right, I got to talk to you about Trey Lance. So here's the thing. Um, I guess the the logic is, well, San Francisco just made it to the NFC Championship game with Brock Purdy, and he got hurt in the NFC Championship game, and then they lost. So you get this allure of like, well, what if he stayed healthy? Maybe they would have been able to keep up in that game, right? Like you get to think about that all offseason. So what if they think about all that? And then they go, well, we're just going to keep Jimmy Garoppolo and we're going to roll with Brock Purdy. Maybe he's our starter. And well, what do we do with Trey Lance? Well, now he's on the trade block, right? Well, should the Vikings go bite on that? That, I guess, is the logic. A million problems already <laughs> with, that, with just what I've said. Um, a, if they're going to get rid of anybody in that quarterback room, it's going to be Jimmy Garoppolo. Garoppolo is a pending free agent. Uh, and they've got these two young guys under contract. If I'm sitting in San Francisco, if I were, uh, the host of locked on 49ers, which you should go listen to for, uh, if you, or if you just want some post playoff loss commiseration, <laughs> but if I were sitting on locked on 49ers, I, I would be like, this is the easiest thing in the world. You let Jimmy Garoppolo walk, you start Trey Lance, you have Brock Purdy compete with him in camp. And if Brock Purdy does beat him in camp, well, probably have a big problem with Trey Lance, but you also have the solution to that problem. So sure, they get to go compete in camp. Trey Lance probably wins it. And then you have a really a backup you're really, really excited about, right? You bring Brock Purdy back in. So like you don't have to do anything with this if you're San Francisco. Um, and that seems pretty easy to me. So where I'm standing, this is not an actual option, but whatever. It's January. It's, you know, the Vikings aren't in the playoffs. So this is what we're talking about, right? Um, but the way I see it with San Francisco if they are willing to part with Trey Lance, they either want a King's ransom. And I don't think you like the whole point of this is to be paying less for a quarterback. And if you have to pay a ton of draft capital, just so you're not paying cap space, you're sort of spinning your wheels. It's just taking one type of currency and spending a whole bunch of it to save another type of currency, but you're not actually generating a profit. It'd be like change exchanging us dollars for pounds and saying, look at all the pounds I made today. You didn't really earn it. <laughs> it's not income. Um, or San Francisco gets rid of him for like a third round pick. And if San Francisco, who just traded three first rounders, is willing to offload that dude for a mid round pick two years later, I'm sorry, that is a red flag and a half. I'm out. I don't want to have anything to do with that. And they can go up on the podium and say all they want. Oh, no, we still believe in him. You know, we just think this is going to be like what's right, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they can say anything they want about Trey Lance on the podium. If that is the asking price, Actions speak louder than words, 
and I can hear them, baby. I'm way out on that. And like, look, Trey Lance since high school has played 23 or started in 23 football games. Uh, he has played in, I think there are six other games he played in, and some of that was like cleanup duty, kneel downs and stuff. So this dude has played like a season and change since high school. This is a raw dude, and we knew he was raw coming out, and it was he was very toolsy, and that's why he went as, as high as he was, as he did. But two years later, the toolsy raw guy that you hope develops you needed to see more out of him after year one than what they saw in just those first couple of weeks. And then with the injury piled on top of it, that's not his fault. It's not his fault that it got injured. But if you're buying that package, you're going, okay, now how much further behind are you than you were supposed to be? I'm not buying, you know, a, a, a really toolsy guy who's going to have a magical three year leap. And I'm just like smart enough to know that he's going to have his leap, even though we didn't get to see him play year two. No, like that's going to affect the development. That is a big old roadblock that you're also buying into. So now he's behind where he's supposed to be and where he was supposed to be by this point probably wasn't that far anyways, because he's it's greener than grass. So not only do I not see it lining up at all, it's also a total fantasy land thing. Cause San Francisco is not going to do that. And the resources don't make sense. I think the best shot you have is somehow working out a trade with Kirk cousins being involved. And then you're just trading like cousins for Lance and you're going to do a weird Jay Cutler, Kyle Orton thing with it. And that's, you know, and then you like hope for the best. Um, but I guess that kind of brings me to what are the options with Kirk Cousins? So I guess by rule, <laughs> they have three, four options. Two of them are not viable. Those two are you cutting Kirk Cousins, which technically by the CBA, you can, you would eat a whole, he, all of his salary is guaranteed. You would not save a dime. You would just pay off the entirety of the Kirk Cousins contract in the 2023 cap environment, which would be like $48 million. Um, which would be $12 million more expensive than it would be to do nothing with Kirk Cousins. So that's clearly not an option. You can trade Kirk Cousins, which is also not a fe feasible option. And I know, I know he's got the no trade. I know Russell Wilson had one too. All right, I'm aware. I know Deshaun Watson had one too. People tell me this all the time. But Deshaun Watson, those were horrible situations. Like those were very toxic situations. That player wanted out. Deshaun Watson wanted out. And then, and then other hot stuff happened there that helped facilitate things. But Russell Wilson wanted out of Seattle. That was a broken relationship. The Vikings and Kirk Cousins have nothing like that relationship. Their relationship is very healthy and fine. There is no reason for Kirk Cousins to want to be out. There's no reason for him to even show up to a meeting about it. So it ain't happening, all right? If, you, if you're hanging your hopes for the offseason on Kirk Cousins getting traded to San Francisco, it ain't happening, all right? It, go outside and find a new dream. Because that, that's not going to come to fruition. Um, those are not viable options. The two truly viable options with Kirk Cousins are an extension of some sort to help get his cap hit down for 2023. Or choose not to do that. And then you do nothing and you let him play on what is functionally a contract here. Those are the two options. So we're going to spend the rest, of the, the rest of the show talking about those two options. What if you do nothing and what would an extension look like? What, what is smart? Here And to be honest, I don't know where I fall on those two options. I think I could probably be talked into either, and we'll see what the Vikings do, and I'll, I think I'll kind of decide how I feel about it then. Um, but I'll, I'll give you the information that you need so that you can make that decision on your own if you are more convicted than I am. Uh, but before we do that, let me talk to you about Daily Fantasy. There's one more NFL game, but you can always play prize picks. Daily Fantasy made easy. Uh, with basketball games and hockey games and stuff, it's all the same stuff. You pick two to six players, and if they will score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win actually up to 25 times your money on entry. They have juiced things up. You just stack up a whole bunch of picks. You say, I think Jalen Hurts will get more than whatever his projection is for rushing yards, you know, 49 and a half. And I think Miles Sanders will get more than a half a touchdown. And I think Patrick Mahomes will get less than 325 yards. And that can be your Super Bowl prize picks thing. You do whatever you want to do. Uh, they offer projections on all kinds of sports. But of course, I mean, the Super Bowl will be fun. You know, I'll be playing it. So download the Prize Picks app and join me or go to prizepicks.com. You can sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users get a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with promo code locked on. That means if you deposit 100 bucks, you get 100 bucks slapped right on top of it or deposit 50, get 50, and so on. Uh, don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up 
for an instant deposit match up to $100. Thanks again for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of the day. For your second listen, it's uh, that time. Go check out Locked On NFL Draft. They will be at the Senior Bowl. A lot of people from Locked On actually will be at the Senior Bowl. So uh, go check out Locked On NFL Draft and explore the Locked On Network. You might get some interesting insights on some of the people as we start to familiarize ourselves with the draft class. I'm going to lag behind on that a little bit. So make sure you go check out uh, Senior Bowl coverage at Locked On NFL Draft if you're interested in that stuff before like March or April when I get into it a little more. So let's keep going with this Kirk Cousins thing. I'll start with what doing nothing looks like because it's a little simpler. Um, But right now, if the Vikings don't lift a finger, which is absolutely a viable thing to do, they will pay a cap hit of $36 million to Kirk Cousins. Uh, Cousins will physically take home $30 million. He has a roster bonus that I believe has already like become guaranteed. Um, I'm not 100% familiar with how the mechanics of that works, but he will make $30 million on the cap. That's which is probably what you care about. And I think on actual like cash flow, he gets more of it up front. Uh, but all counting in the, the year of our Lord 2023. Uh, and then after that, um, he has two void years. Now, if you are unfamiliar with what a void year is, um, basically you can think of it as a fake year. You can think of it as we are, you're under contract for $0 in 2024, but you're not actually under contract. Uh, and you can stack like as many void years as you want. I think the Eagles had a contract where they stacked like 10 void years on top of each other. Um, and it's to spread signing bonus and stuff out over more years. So you can spread it a little thinner. It's very similar to like, taking a loan with no interest, which if you're a finance person, that should sound like cheating, and it kind of is, and it's why you see it all the time. So on the books as it stands, the Vikings owe Kirk Cousins, or owe the salary cap 6.25 mil of Kirk Cousins' deal in 24, and that same amount in 2025, but his contract will void on in February of 2024. So after the 2023 season, his contract voids out, he becomes a free agent and the Vikings have to pay off the rest of their debt, which is 12 and a half million. Um, so that's how it'll actually play out. 36 mil this year, 12 mil next year in dead cap. And he walks. So if you're okay with that and honestly, yeah, all right, that, that could work. I could see that being the, the deal, right? Um, You have Kirk Cousins this year, right? You're not scrambling for a quarterback with the 23rd overall pick. You are, you're not saying, okay, like, are are we bringing in Jimmy Garoppolo? Because, like, that might be the bet. Like, if you traded Kirk Cousins away for draft picks, you might be talking about bringing in Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, Maybe you don't want that. Um, Maybe you don't want to, or maybe you want to draft somebody like Anthony Richardson, who is, he's like the raw guy, right? The, The Jordan love of this class, the, you know, I guess Josh Allen was that guy once. So sometimes that can work out great. Pat Mahomes was one. Um, But, you know, the the really toolsy kind of raw kid that Trey Lance was one. Um, The raw kid that needs a million different things fixed. But if he does, he's the best quarterback of all time. Um, That's what I get from Anthony Richardson. Although, again, not into the draft guys at all. So correct me if I'm wrong. Or sub in whatever draft prospect you want. Maybe you draft that kid this year. Uh, find a way to draft him, and then he sits behind Kirk Cousins for a year. Then Kirk Cousins walks. You take a $12.5 million dead cap hit. That does sting. But remember, in 2024, the cap will be $256 million. So it's okay. <laughs> it's it's doable. Um, and then you have your fresh rookie come out year two with a year of experience under his belt, and then he goes. Um, that would be the way that plan works, and it's perfectly viable. I think I can do better with an extension. I think the plan that I have here is one that I would prefer, but I could pretty easily be talked out of it. And I also am very open to like other ideas. So let me know like what you want to do with Kirk Cousins, but don't say trade him because that's a fantasy. (laughs) Here's what I don't like about doing nothing. The cap gets a lot harder to deal with, right? When I did my uh, salary cap doomers article, it involved extending Kirk Cousins, and that saved $23 million. It was a really way more aggressive extension. But that move basically allowed me to keep as much of the roster as I wanted intact. Uh, and I could have kept more of it intact if I wanted to keep those players, but I decided that I didn't like on merit. 
So not having that available is obviously going to be an issue here. You have to cut more players. Now, you might be okay with that. You might be one of those people that's been saying, yeah, but we got to get rid of these old veterans anyways, the Kendrickses and the Smiths and blah, blah, blah. I've seen a whole bunch of people in YouTube comments and people have tweeted at me and stuff. Uh, basically, since the Vikings lost in the playoffs, that, man, this hey, we, we, we can't just run this back. We got to blow it all up and start over. Well, if you want to get rid of those players anyways because you just don't think that Harrison Smith is doing well enough, I think you're insane. But if you want to do that anyways, okay, then go for it. And then you don't have to extend Kirk Cousins, right? You can just eat Kirk Cousins' cap hit, cut a whole bunch of other players to make it work. And then you're essentially in uh, like a weird halfway lame duck year with Cousins. And maybe that's what you want, right? Um, there is, I guess that's, if you if you hate Cousins more than anything, that's probably your best bet. Because you're not getting rid of him. You, you can't trade him. Um we, as much as you want to in your heart of hearts, you can't do it. So the best you can do is essentially say, okay, here's our most aggressive exit strategy, right? And you still get a year of Kirk Cousins. So if you did want to keep some people around, figure out some contracts, try to try one more year of this, and then everybody leaves, and then you have to build a roster from the ground up, maybe that's the way that they want to do it too. So you still have some options, but I don't prefer that because I don't want the Vikings to be bad. Like I, I want them to get better, but I don't think you have, like, I, I, and I've been very adamant about this. You don't need to get bad to get good. Like, you don't need to get worse to become a better team. The Bengals were bad, but not on purpose, right? They didn't tank on purpose. But other than that, like, all of the deep teams didn't really tank. The Eagles, they had one bad year in 2020, but otherwise they didn't really tank. They were kind of on the cusp of the playoffs or seventh seed or whatever. Chiefs didn't tank when they got Mahomes. They got it coming off a playoff year. The Bills... Got Josh Allen coming off a playoff year. The Rams won the Super Bowl last year. They did the opposite, right? The 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 fallacy that you need to get bad to get good is sort of the uh, it's the same thing I think that that allures people to Trey Lance. It's really easy to think about all the good things that can happen by selling away all your roster, uh, all, all your like every piece on your roster for a whole bunch of draft picks. And ooh, those draft picks can be so something so sweet. But remember. They could all be tread well too. You're, you're buying a risky prop proposition there. Um, and I think people don't pay that enough mind. So I'm not into the strategy that sort of leads to that. Um, but if you are, then this is absolutely the move for you and you're totally valid and I love you and I'm not going to try to argue with you. Um, but hear me out. I have a pitch that I think gives you a little bit of the best of both worlds of kind of not being stuck to Kirk Cousins, not having like no options with that. If you decide, man, we really just want to get better at quarterback. If you make that decision next year, it gives you an avenue to, to pursue that. But it also doesn't mean you have to. And it also is something that based on the history of the contracts that Cousins has signed, I think he would say yes to. So let me give you that pitch of what an extension would look like um, right after... I talk to you about our new sports betting partner. It's FanDuel. Uh, it is the Super Bowl, and I love putting together stupid little like Super Bowl games. As we're going to host a Super Bowl party um, and putting together all kinds of stuff. And FanDuel is absolutely where I'm going to get my lines and odds for that. Or you can just do it. Just just do some grambles right there on FanDuel. Have a little fun. I love the Super Bowl props, all the weird like what's the the announcer's tie color going to be like all of that crazy stuff. Uh, what color is the Gatorade and all of that? That is so much fun to me. And you can find all of that fun stuff at FanDuel. And they have a whole bunch of features that make betting on sports fun and easy. If you're a newcomer to the whole thing, no better time than the Super Bowl to get in. They have a special promo for the Super Bowl called a no sweat first bet. For Super Bowl 57, you get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Let's you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to anytime touchdown, etc. cetera. Uh, the FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, super easy to use, and you can get paid on your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to, to claim your no-sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Okay, hear me out. 
All right, Every, everybody, everybody who hates everything the Vikings have done in the last 48 years, all right, it's, hear me out. Because I think this is a contract that will work with Kirk Cousins. I am going to do a one-year extension here. Now, if you think, no, 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 we got to extend Kirk Cousins long-term, we have to lock him down, then go ahead and add other years to the end of this. It won't change the fundamental structure for these next two years, right? Um, so if you would rather that happen, this absolutely works in a universe where you want to extend it for longer, but I'm not going to get into it. Um, I'm assuming fully guaranteed money because Kirk Cousins hasn't signed a non fully guaranteed contract in like four contracts. So I'm assuming that, um, Cousins has made, and I'm talking actual physical cash flow over the last four years. Last year, he made $40 million in cash flow because there was a restructure signing bonus extension thing. He made $21 million in actual cash flow in 2021, $40 million in 2020 because there was another restructure, 28 in 2019, 26 in 2018. So everything he has signed with the Vikings has been fully guaranteed and he's either making somewhere in the 20s or he's restructuring and they're signing bonus and some of that stuff gets front loaded, right? Um, so I think it's fair and he's scheduled to make $30 million in 2023 and he is all but guaranteed to actually see that money via the Vikings. He is 100% guaranteed to see that money from someone unless he decides he wants to go to another team. That money's coming from the Vikings. So you're, you're locked into that. Um... And I think that somewhere in the, the lowish 30s in actual physical cash flow is going to be okay for Cousins. I think that's a number that they're around the number that they're going to land on. And if it's lower than that, the Vikings won the negotiation. If it's higher than that, then Kirk won the negotiation. Um, so I'm going to give him one extra year. He's now under contract through 2024, and those void years no longer slam together. So he'll have a $6.25 million dead cap hit in 2025. That's still a void year. Um, and extending him into 2024 because that was going to have signing bonus acceleration and it doesn't now, it's sort of like a discount on that particular year because $6 million of the expense for 2024 now gets shot off into the next year, which is pretty cool. So I like that. First thing, I'm going to convert the, the roster bonus. So 20 million of the 30 million he's slated to, to make, I'm going to convert that into a signing bonus to make it prorate across the three years of the contract, uh, including the, the, the void year now. That, and I'm, I'm also going to tack on an extra uh, $4 million onto that. So he gets a $24 million signing bonus, including $4 million in new money this year. That will save the Vikings, the way it all spreads out, 12 mil in 2023. Pretty good savings for an extension, right? 12 mil in 2023 that we can now go use to help get our rookies under contract or help us extend Jefferson or whatever you need to do with that, right? Um, I will add a $34 million base salary to 2024. So his cap hit will be 40 mil next year. And this year it will be 24 mil. I think I did that correctly and then uh the dead cap in 2025 will be about 14 mil which is a very scary number for dead cap but remember the cap grows a lot here year to year and probably will for like five years now it will grow a lot so what used to be a lot of money like three years ago is very quickly going to become not a lot of money um and so you have to go by percentage of cap in that cap environment. And his cap hits, at least for 23 and 24, are going to be about 15%, which is about where he's been for the last few years. Now, I know I, I can hear you already saying it, but but they've been paying him too much in the last few years, and that's why they haven't been able to come up with a roster and blah, blah, blah. I get it. I don't think you're going to get away with lowballing him and, and paying him 13 or 14% of the cap. I don't think that's feasible. If you can get him to agree with it, great, but I'm trying to be realistic here. So... I went for what makes him paid 15% of the cap was the math that I did. I think that's where a negotiation ends up, right? This is not an offer. This is a, a prediction for where the contract would end up. Um, so I know those numbers sound scary. I know uh, a $40 million playing on 40 mil in 2024 sounds really scary. But that is, by percentage of the cap, about the same as he did this year. Um and I think he takes that because he makes 34 mil this year now, 
and he's never made more than $30 million in a year where he isn't restructuring his contract and, and taking a signing bonus. So I think he takes 34 mil and then um, he makes 34 mil in the next year in base salary as well. So I, I think he takes two years of 34 mil or you can make it 32, 36 if it's important to him that it escalates or whatever. Um, and then you can mess around with the signing bonus to make the cap like whatever you want it to be. And that's the other thing about this. If you're worried about pushing too much cap down the road because I did a giant signing bonus, you can do less of a signing bonus and pay more off in 2023 if you would rather do that. Sure, go for it. Uh, or if you would, re if you really want to minimize the cap hit in these two years and say, well, this is a two-year window with Kirk and I really want to maximize it. I really want to get the most talent around impossible. You can kick more cans down the road and then say, well, in 2025, he's leaving anyways. And we're probably screwed anyway. So yeah, let's eat a giant dead cap hit in 2025. Why not? And I'm pretty sympathetic to that as well. You could also add another void year if you would want to start using 2026 for this. I think that would also be fine. I don't see it as necessary, but it's all fine if it becomes necessary. You can do all that stuff. So, we now have Kirk Cousins under contract for what I'll call a fair amount uh, for the next two years. And then you draft Anthony Richardson. Now he's got two years to, to develop. And the other part of this is I'm asking him to rip up the no trade as part of this. Um, so that if Anthony Richardson does end up being good, and you can probably see that within a year, right? Like he's not going to beat out Kirk Cousins right away. I think most people understand that he's not going to be ready to play his rookie year, right? So you're, you're red shirting him and everybody understands that and we'll be okay with that. But then you get to training camp next year and let's say he's playing really well, find whoever's the most desperate and you can probably offload Kirk Cousins and a whole bunch of that guaranteed salary and a whole bunch of that cap space and, um, you know, kind of move forward from there and probably get some draft picks back too because you can get somebody whose quarterback just got hurt or who is in a bad situation that they didn't think they'd be in or somebody is worse than they thought or whatever. Right. Um, so it gives you that option, the option to kind of transition to a young kid. If he's ready early, you can deal with that. If he's ready, if he's not ready after one year, you have a second year to try to develop him more. And then by year three, all right, you're in, you're with the rookie or bust. Or if you really want to, okay, you can, you're, you're now you're negotiating with Kirk cousins at, on the cusp of him for hitting free agency with void years. Teams have been in worse spots. That's not ideal, but if that's the worst case scenario, that's not a bad worst case scenario. Um, what I wanted to do with that was kind of show you, okay, here is a way where you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. You can make it so that Kirk cousins isn't playing on a contract here. That's going to be important to him. He cares about that. Um, and from the team's perspective, not the worst thing to get rid of that distraction, right? So you're not, you're not on a contract here. You have a success, uh, uh, an opportunity to have a succession plan. If there's a quarterback that you like, or if you don't like any of the quarterbacks, as you say, you're not an Anthony Richardson guy and you don't want Will Levis and you don't want any of these quarterbacks. Well, you can draft one next year, right? Maybe there's a guy next year you like. So you kind of have two years to figure out a succession plan. And then you have a, a fairly comfortable exit strategy. Um, it's not the most aggressive stra exit strategy. It's still a little more conservative and it still draws the process out a little bit, but you're letting a 36 or 35 year old. I think he would be uh, quarterback hit free agency, right? As you get into the quarterback on a rookie year thing, and hopefully he's had time to develop. So you've got that option available to you. And if you don't like any of those things, then you still have a quarterback and, and there's like a bit of a safety net to it. That's the way I wanted to put that extension together. It's a little different than the extension that I pitched when I did the like, this is how to fix the salary cap thing. It's a little bit more, I think I put a little bit more thought into it, into how it would work. Um, and if I got any math wrong, by the way, I apologize. I, I very back of the envelope. So if I did any calculations wrong, I apologize. But it's feasible on the cap. I think it's reasonable that to expect Kirk Cousins would take a deal like that. And it gives you several different paths forward in the future you're not locked into we must be with Kirk Cousins for the next two, two years like no there's ways to draft a kid or, or get out from under it right if you don't want it but you're also not in a situation where well Kirk Cousins is gone and there's no you have to get a new quarterback because if you end up wanting to keep him that option is available to you too that's what I wanted to figure out with this um tomorrow's Twitter Tuesday so ask me your questions uh, ask me your salary cap questions, especially too, because I want I want this to be the off season where people learn how the cap 
is manipulated and and how contracts are structured and stuff. I want I want to be this I want this to be the season where people know more about it than just looking up numbers on the cap website and being like, "Whoa, they're 24 mil over. What are they going to do?" and panicking. I, we can be better. All right? So ask me your salary cap questions or whatever questions you have. All right? So it's all open. No no rules. Well, some rules. All right, don't be weird. <laughs> Uh, you can send them to me at Luke Brown NFL or at Locked On Vikings on Twitter. Uh, check out Locked On NFL for uh, Super Bowl talk. You can find me there on Tuesday as well. Um, I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, skull. <laughs>